In our last video, we talked about the right of possession of Ontario matrimonial homes. And as a quick reminder, a matrimonial home is generally the house in which a married couple ordinarily lived at the time of separation. We also talked about equalization in a previous video. And as a short recap, it's really a numbers game, which is based on this very, very simple formula. And we know that there's a process involved in calculating each spouse's NFP. We calculate both spouses' assets, net of their liabilities, as of two dates, being the date of marriage and the date of separation. The growth in each spouse's wealth during this period is called their NFP. The spouse with the higher NFP pays the other one half of the difference. At the end, the wealth accumulated by the parties during the marriage is equalized, and both spouses leave the marriage with the same value. Our law as it relates to the matrimonial home has some rules and exceptions that can really change the outcome of this equalization process. And these fall into two categories, the first being deductions and the second being exclusions. This video will focus on deductions only. And the very simple concept here is that the value of property owned by spouses on the date of marriage gets removed or deducted from the calculation. We'll use Joe and Eric as examples. We'll assume that Eric was a stay-at-home parent and did not accumulate any assets of his own during the marriage. So his NFP will be zero. And we see that Joe had an RRSP worth $100,000 at the date of marriage. But by the time they separated, it had grown to $300,000. This means that the assets increased in value by $200,000 during the marriage. And we know that this is the only portion of the RRSP that is subject to equalization. This is because the initial $100,000 that existed on the date of marriage is being deducted. So as a general rule, the more assets that Joe owns on the date of marriage, the more money he'll save in the equalization process. But it's a different story when we're talking about the matrimonial home. Let's say that Joe solely owned his home at the date of marriage which is worth $500,000 along with a mortgage of $300,000. This means that the equity in the home was $200,000. By the end of the marriage, the value of Joe's house had increased to $800,000 and he'd paid off his mortgage completely. Normally, we would start from the $200,000 equity that existed at the date of marriage and we would determine that the equity increased by $600,000 by the end of the marriage. And that $600,000 typically would need to be equalized. But Ontario's Family Law Act says, not so fast. Deductions for matrimonial homes are not permitted. This exception in the Family Law Act requires us to look at assets that were accumulated outside of the marital period. And it has the effect of forcing Joe to equalize the entire equity of the house from the date he purchased it to the date of separation. This is great for Eric, but bad for Joe. Had the regular rule of deductions applied, he would have equalized the value of $600,000 as opposed to the full $800,000. When we split that difference, he's losing $100,000. And how could Joe have prevented this? The short answer is a marriage contract, or what we often call a prenup. As always, it's crucial to speak to a knowledgeable family lawyer who can give you advice on the specifics of your case. 